Mufada stuff. Oh, when Mufadas go wrong, because unlike any of you guys, I tend to screw things up a lot. So I need backup plan A, backup plan B, backup plan C. I'm going to give you a little bit of that. And then there's also, I'm going to say like another position. I've taught this one at some of the other group chart camps that people seem to like. They call it the fail Mufada. Again, I'm super creative. So if I fail at the Mufada, oh shit, fail Mufada. Amazing. <laughs> But before we get into it in a lot of detail, one of the things that will help me, because I don't want to spend a ton of time on entrances, I want to get an idea of how you guys are entering into the Omoplata. If you guys don't know how to do an Omoplata at all, that's fine. Raise your hand and I'll put you over here and we'll, we'll work with you a little bit. Other than that, I just want to see for like two minutes how everybody's getting into the Omoplata position, because that's going to vary a little bit how I kind of tweak the class. Make sense? All right, sweet. So let's go. Three, two, one. So who can throw out uh, an easy defense to Mufada? Just name one. Forward roll, perfect. Another one. Uh, jump over. Jump over, perfect. Another one. Sit up. Kind of sit up in posture, right? There's some other shit too, but those are like the three main ones. So if we know what the three main kind of ways that people are going to defend our Mufada, we should use that information to think about the way we set it up, right? So if you're super fast and athletic, unlike me, congratulations. If you're not, I'll give you some options. So if I'm here, right, and I'm starting close guard, and obviously you can do it from other positions as well. If I can get a grip on the sleeve here, and I get my hand underneath here, I'm already in a pretty good spot. So I'm going to be able to defend a couple of his, a couple of his defenses. Now he may be really tight with that leg. He may be loose. If he's loose, no problem. We're here. All right, I'm ready. So is he going to forward roll? No. no. Not really. Is he going to jump over my head? No. Not really. All right. And we have the ability to easily or more easily flatten him, right? And we have the ability to finish it. So for me, right, I'm never going to, I'm never coming up here. This is perfectly valid, and you can finish your Mufada from up here, no problem. I'm never doing it, right? My success rate from finishing Mufada up here, particularly on bigger, stronger guys, is not great, so why the hell am I gonna do it? I wanna try and increase my success rate as much as possible, so I'm not doing this. Again, if you do it and you're great at it, good for you, I'm just not doing it. So if in a perfect world I'm in this situation, right, it's going to be much easier for me now to flatten him, right? My legs are locked in case I screwed up, right? And then from here I can hold his belt and walk away. Once I've walked away, open, come up, grip, and then I'm going to elevate my legs. If you have trouble, come underneath the chin and come forward. Uh, I have a question. Sure. When he put his hand inside, yeah. Find yourself, plus 12, no. yeah, if he's got it underneath? Yeah, yeah. So when I flatten him, whether it's inside or not, I should still be able to make it work. Okay. And then right here, pull yourself tight, come up, and you got it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, one more time. Okay, we're going to do some stuff off some different entries and different approaches, and then we're going to deal with some of those defenses, and then we'll get to that weird position. But in a perfect world, this is my preferred method of entering the Mufada because it increases my chances of success. So grip, slide, it's already flat. Now I have to get this hand out so I can come up, hold, push, come up, grab that far shoulder. I like to hold here. If he's very flexible, I'll go under his chin. Sometimes grip, hold. If you can get like almost a rear naked, better. And then I come forward as opposed to coming this way. If he's very flexible and I come forward, it doesn't work, then I'll rock up. Make sense? Yeah. You want to try it? Yeah. Three, two, one. Okay. I'm going to give you as much as I possibly can in this position. I'm going to hang out afterwards, obviously, over the match. If you have any questions or want me to go to more detail on any of it, I'm happy to do so. But I figure most of you guys aren't going to see me again for at least another Globe Charter camp, so six months, whatever it is. So the more I give you now, the more you may be able to take one bit or one piece and put it potentially into your game, all right? So a couple things. So again, I like to start here and dive under. But well, you know, shit happens sometimes. So maybe when I start here and dive under, that first time I was able to flatten them out, but that doesn't always work. So I come in, I dive under, I open, I'm here, but he's super stable. Like, shit, it's not working. I can't get it. So I have some different options, all right? So a couple things. One. I can use this for a sweep, all right? So if I can't get him here, I can crank down and just roll over, and I sit back up. When I'm sitting up here, my upper thigh cemented to my calf. All my weight is right here. 
My hand that's closest to his head grabs his wrist. Right, and I don't want to grab just up here. I want to grab right at the wrist. Sometimes he's going to give me an easy wrist lock. Right, I'm right here. I'm going to hold his elbow. And I'm going to push down as I pull up. Right, it doesn't work. We have other options. But just, you know, it helps. <coughs> it's also one of the reasons I always like to try and get under the leg if possible. Right, I'll do it without that, but I, if I can get underneath that leg, I always prefer that. So we're here. I dive under. Open. Oh shit, I can't get it. So I need to get this arm over. We're here. I can't break it down. I'm going to lock my legs. I'm going to kick out and roll. When I kick out, I'm going to go this way. All right? I'm not going straight, so it'll get real stable for me. All right? If I go straight, I can't make anything happen. So what's going to happen, I'm going to go this way, and I turn, and I just bring him right over. Nice and easy. See how easy that is? Come right back. Very heavy. I can't be here, so it's not going to work. I have to, like, imagine I'm trying to, you know, just flatten his bicep. All right? Grip. Sometimes you get easy wrist lock. Usually not. Hold. Boom. If for some reason I can't make that work, normally I dive. I can't go over the mouth. That would be the plan. One more time. Again, you can have the same kind of approach and grab the leg later. Just normally I like to grab it first. All right. One. It's too stable. Connect. Away a little bit. Angle. Bring him over. Come up. If that doesn't work, catch the head first. Don't just go this way. Catch the head first, because now he's thinking head. Right there. Make sense? Yes, I'm getting there. Alright, three, two, one. So, you know, obviously, there's sometimes you're going to go for it without grabbing that leg, and there's going to be tricks that we can use to flatten them out. And then sometimes we go for this setup. And you're still gonna have trouble, you just you can't flatten them for some reason. Right? So there's an alternative approach we can use to flatten them from that table. Right. Right. So we'll get them here, get in deep, here. Right. Still can't flatten them, just can't do it. Right. I try this, I try that stupid sweep Jay showed me. It's crap, it doesn't work. Right. Another globe trotter showed me this one. You can bring your knee inside. Right. Instead of being out here, you bring your knee inside. Right. So I have to move, and my knee comes in, mm -hmm. all right? And then I fly. When I come off, I turn this way. And then I walk back. And we're here. Dive then Can't fly, and I try all that shit that I learned. Can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. All right, so bring the knee inside. You have to move out. In the inside. Oh, don't come down yet. Come up. Good. It stays nice and stable. You can bring this leg in more. It's stable. All right. So I'm like, okay. Now I lock. Flatten a little bit. Come up. And then I walk back. One more time. Here. One more time. Here. It's not working, it's not working, it's not working. I got just all sucked. And then the inside, lock, down and away, come up. Turn your knee. Now my knee, you see my knee's under him, I need my knee out. So I turn here. You can see the way this is set up? The foot right on the shoulder, his wrist is caught right here. And I'm here. <coughs> oh, it's just like this. And my weight is down. And then I slide back. So my knee goes from being next to his hip, slides back on this direction. Boom. Make sense? Yeah. Right, let's do it. Three, two, one. Hmm? Before we do so, I just want to show you a couple other things where if I don't have that underhook on his leg and I get into that little plotter position, again, I don't want to go unless I can flatten him out. All right? So these are more standard. If I grip here and grip here and walk away, and come up, so that one's pretty standard. Uh, or even if, and again, I said I don't like to come up from here, but even if you are up from here, sometimes you can walk away, walk away, walk away, walk away, and do it that way. Not something I usually go for, but I want to make sure that you have it or you've seen it before. <coughs> so the next thing is going to be 
and what I call a fail product, and I use it more as a position, and there's a lot of things I'll do off of it. Super, super easy to get to, right? Because all I need to do, instead of going fully for the Moplata, all I'm looking to do to get to is right here. So this is the position. Super easy. Well, you've probably all been here by accident, or maybe even on purpose at some point anyways, right? Raise your hand if you've been in some semblance of this position before, right? And you're like, oh shit, you're trying to get the Moplata, or I'm going to try to get the triangle, and he puts his hand down, and oh, I can't get it. Right? So if I'm in this position, there's a couple things I need to be considering. Right? I need to make sure that my weight is on his head and on his back. I can't have both my legs on his back because then I'm going for a ride every time. It doesn't matter if he's bigger, stronger. It'll just be a faster ride if he's bigger. That's all. Right? And if I overplay this foot, although sometimes I'll do that on purpose, almost everyone in the world tends to grab it and try and do evil shit to it. And I prefer them not do that. Mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna keep it here, I can keep my legs this way, but still keep relatively good posture, all right? Now, what I've found, although this won't work on any of you anymore since I'm gonna show it to you, the first two common reactions are, are pretty predictable, right? Most of the time, they're either gonna take their forearm, that's, that's my arm, right? <laughs> they're gonna take their forearm and posture, because they wanna bring me this way, right? and they're gonna push up really hard and they're gonna hope this happens. Oh, shit. Yeah. If you've done it to them a couple times, or maybe they're a little savvy that maybe that arm's at risk, they're gonna hold both their arms together, squeeze the crap out of your leg, step up with that far leg, and send you for another ride. Right. So if we know that, it's all in the hips. Right? You saw Happy Gilmore, you see that movie? It's all in the hips. You don't have to wiggle them, because that'd be weird. But that's basically what we're talking about. So if he, po he posts that far arm, I'm going to elevate my hips, all right, size again, I'm going to bring my heel to my ass, and I'm going to catch his arm, all right? Now, no gi, I have to come all the way around to grab his arm. Gi, it's a little bit easier because I can just grab the sleeve, all right? So I'll show you the no gi one, because I tend to do this with both. It's, I can't reach, right, no gi and make it. Yeah, I got this fat belly in the way. Gi, I can just come up, grab, and pull, all right? And then I push down on my leg and extend. And you can have, if you have to, you come up with both arms, pull. Not a neck crank, all right? It may look like one, it's not a neck crank. Back of the shoulder. If it's no gi, I don't know why I snap, but I, I do for some freaking weird reason. I tend to snap, and then I swing, catch, and then I pull and push, all right? If you connect both hands together, this, this one's my favorite. Connect both hands together, Steps up like he's gonna throw you to the stratosphere. I elevate. I catch. Mm. I turn this hip towards his head to the ground. I make his head go to the ground. <laughs> right? I go here. Boom. If he's still sitting up or whatever, I'll come then and I can either go for a Kamira or most likely I'll go with this and just take this cheap little arm bar here. Come back up. And the cool thing about this is maybe it, as I'm going to get to the umuflada, it doesn't work. I'm like, oh shit, it doesn't work. So I push, and I'm here. So come back again. So it's kind of first how I was going for it. I'd go to get to the umuflada. I'm here. I'm getting it. Oh, it doesn't work. I get my knee here, and now I'm here. Super, I mean, you can get there a thousand ways, right? Once you're here, it's how you play with it, right? He pushes with that hand, elevate the hips, catch. Either come up and grab the sleeve, if I'm going to grab the sleeve, I come up with my elbow grab the sleeve. Or, you don't have to snap, but you look cooler if you do. If you grab, extend and pull. Or again, he controls both hands together. Active hips, catch, turn this hip to the ground. Get his head to the ground. If you turn this way, sometimes you get a tap. If not, catch, hold the elbow. Make sense? Cool. Three, two, one. Obviously the triangle's there, right? Obviously. Um, a lot of times I'll try and threaten the triangle a lot and then I'll help you open up some other options. Um, I always prefer to have that arm of my partners more in that more plotted position. Sometimes they recognize that and they have a better chance of being able to run the pipe if they have an arm in front. Right? I mean by that. So, so for here, yeah, I set everything up this way. I'm not usually getting the underhook I'm going in the failed plotted position. Normally that's more with the arms outside and I'm coming into here or I'm sliding this leg 
inside and come in. I want his arm here. Sometimes it's here. I don't like this as much. He has much more control of my hip here. It's easy for, easier for him to posture up, run the pipe. I don't like that as much. But we do have some options. If we get here, strangely enough, for me, the most important part is my hand. I just part my hand right here. Remember, this is that prison rules thing, right? Prison rules, don't look at me, bitch. Right? Hands right here. Don't give it away. Don't be like, ah, but just put it right here. The other hand is right here, and my foot is right here. Now, usually if they're going to do this, they're not just going to turn, because if they turn, they don't have power. Like, if he just tries to turn towards me without coming up, he doesn't have any power. It's the posturing up and turning is where the power is. Right? And so what's going to happen as I'm here and here, as he postures up, I want to turn his face so my knee comes in. Okay. So if I'm here and here, if I don't push the face and he's tight and he postures up, it's very hard for me to get my knee inside. So the hand here for me is the most important part. As he tries to run that pipe, push. So I'm here. Now my other leg comes around. Right? And even though right now it looks like I don't have good posture, right, so he can smash me, because of the legs the way they are, right, I can put a lot of pressure on his neck. So this foot underneath the neck is going to kick up. This foot is going to kick down. And we get pressure on the neck, and we bring him down. And take the armbar. So we're here, and here, and here, and here. And I get there the second I feel his arms here, here I'm here. I mean, as soon as I know this is here, I'm doing this, all right? And then I wait. I don't initiate. I mean, sometimes I can, but usually not, all right? And as he goes, boom, boom, and then squeeze. And I tend to take it on an angle as opposed to coming up. It's not because it feels tight here, all right? Because it feels tight when I'm up, no. Because it feels tighter when I'm here. Yeah. So I can keep it down because I have more pressure on his head and his neck, which allows me to have him concentrate on that. It can be a better chance of opening his arm. Because you know, look around, we've got a bunch of insanely strong people here, and I'm not one of them. So if I do this, too hard, too hard, too hard. But if I bring him down, I squeeze, and then I get attack at the wrist, and then I finish. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Make sense? Right. You got it? Can you not choke him off with your feet? And yeah, I don't usually choke together. him with that. Sometimes you can kind of neck crank him a little bit, but you're not going to make any friends with that one. <laughs> okay. Right? <laughs> you know. Couldn't you go to like a go-go platter You could, possibly, but I don't know if it seems to work. I'll show you one other thing off the table in a minute, though. All right? Let's do it. Three, two, one. So we're going to get here, put the arms on the side. I don't want them to be. I get here and here. He comes up. This time don't come up all the way. He's here, and people are trying to place their leg over. Right? That's, not, that's not what we want. Right? I want to let him come up more. So now I can bring my hips up. My ass has to get off the ground. Don't have a lazy ass. Get ass off the ground. I'm the oldest person in here probably, so if my ass can get off the ground, so can yours. And bring him down. Right? You're going to have a harder time if when he's low, either you're trying to like place your leg over, or you're gonna put your knee in a bad position, potentially hurt yourself. Now you can push down this leg, that's really gonna suck. So let him come up and then go. If for some reason he's not coming up, then come it all the way around and take it that way. Okay? But don't get in that situation where you're tweaking your own knee. Alright? Alright, keep going. Three, two, one. So let's do a question. I'll show you two more options on this. We'll open it up for uh, Q&A. You know, I'll hang out with Mac. He said, anybody wants me to go deeper on any of these? And then I'm going to go sleep some old. No, I'll go to the party thing and dress up like a hobo. My normal attire. Alright. So again, we get in this position. Boom. Everything's good. Now, here's a question with the Google Plus. This isn't technically a Google Plus, but I will do it sometimes. Right, if they don't come up all the way, I still start everything in the same. Right? As he comes up and I duck under, I'll just grip. Yeah, take that. I mean, it's not truly, I mean, a Google product is really going to be more if this one's under and I'm pulling around the head. But as long as I'm under the chin, oh, yeah. I can usually make that work. So that's one option. Right? Another one that I like a lot 
and I need to have enough space here, all right, so that I can get my knee in here, all right. And if his legs are crossed, which is actually a reasonably good idea, this is going to be much harder to do. All right, so if his legs are crossed, I may not go for this if I see that. If his legs are open, yeah, much more likely to go for this if his legs are open. If they're crossed, it's going to be more difficult for me to get into the leg lock attack that I want. As he starts to potentially run, if I'm too slow to get where I want him to, or sometimes I want to do it this way anyways, if I get my knee inside and come around, one, you have the potential wrist key lock here, but then I can come around and catch his nasty heel hook. Alright, just if you go for that, be careful you don't twist his arm off if it gets stuck in there, like I almost did. Alright, that's not a good way to demonstrate the move. Alright, so for here, there's that space, and then I turn it up, I get my knee inside, alright, he rips that arm out, I come over, like you're going to put your heel in his ass, don't though, please. Catch it, right, not here, but like you're going there, and then you go underneath, and then you grab. And when you go for the heel hook, it's important to catch with this part of your arm to take his toes and pull his toes back as far as possible before you even grab the heel. Alright? So I'm controlling his Achilles. I catch. And again, I'll do this slow. I peel this back as much as possible. Alright? So those people will tap there. The heel hook is not here. Can you make it work sometimes? Sure. But it's not the most efficient. The heel hook is catching here. Alright? And there's a kind of a trend, progression of grips. Right, for any heel. Right, there's gable grip, crossover grip, hug grip. Right? So you have this grip, which is reasonably tight. And if I wanted to finish, I'd pull towards me right, and extend. Right? It's not so much ripping down, it's more of an extension. So you feel this one that feels kind of tight, right? Yeah. <laughs> this should feel tighter, yes? Yep. This should feel tighter, yes? Yeah, I'm already like, there you go. Yeah, considering that. So it's a progression of grips. Grip one, oh, it doesn't work, shit. Grip two, oh, it doesn't work, shit. Grip three, oh, look at that. Why don't you just go straight to three? Because I'm nice. Uh. Right? <laughs> so, something to play with. Again, all that happens is you're dipping that knee in, bringing your leg up and over, holding his Achilles, wrapping, catching, right? Good, good, good. Make sense? Alright, let's do it. 3, 2, 1. Questions in anything we will over Again, I throw a lot at you. Hopefully at least one or two things stick. And you can try it out in your game and see if it works. How do you try leg lock safety? How do you try leg lock safety? Yeah. Try leg lock and don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> my school, we do leg locks from like white belt on up. We have uh, one rule in my school. Don't be a douche, that's it. We have like a ratio that we talk about. So we want uh, like no more than 20% douchebag ratio. <laughs> All right? But I don't want like, you know, five douchebags out of whatever the hell 20% would be. I want like, each person should have no more than 20, but you might have a couple guys or girls that are gonna be 50, and they're gonna be counteracted by somebody who's 10, All right? and somebody who might be zero, and somebody's 30. It's like a ratio overall, because you need some people that just wanna go, All right? As long as they're trying to be safe, you know, but they'll, play, they'll do some of that dirty shit, all right? But they're not enough of a douchebag where they don't want to hurt anybody, all right? That's unacceptable. If you're trying to hurt somebody, you're out. But, like, if you have, because you have that group of people in your school, and when they roll together, it's like everybody moves out of the way, yeah. you know? No. They just want to get after it. It's fine. And you're going to have some people be like, oh, I'm not rolling with them, all right? Okay, but sometimes you kind of got to. Sometimes, all right? That's, like, the main thing for us. Is there any variations of white belts you can use in a position like a foot lock, ankle lock, anything like that? Mm. Oh, for like IBJJF stuff? Yeah, so if you <laughs> wanted to use it in competition, obviously you can't go to Phil Plata. Nine, I mean, most likely if you even go into the Phil Plata and do any of the shit I just showed you, even though it's a shoulder lock, they're going to have no idea what it is, unless they're, you know, unless they've done it or seen it, they're going to think you're neck cranking them and you're screwed, most likely. And then good luck trying to argue with them. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> they have very nice tournaments, it's fine, yeah, it's cool, we didn't notice. <laughs> but no, no, it's not, not my thing, right? I prefer submission only, or if you're going to do points now, like Abu Dhabi, stuff like that, EBI, you know? I like all submissions, do everything, just don't be an asshole, be nice to each other, right? I have like 14-year-old white belts in my school that are, you know, doing 
truck positions. I didn't even know what that was until recently. I just knew what the move was. I didn't know I had a fancy name. Eddie Bravo was good at naming stuff. But um, you just do moves and, you know, if, if there's tension, you let go. No big deal. We're not trying to hurt each other. It's not that big of a deal. The reason leg locks are so dangerous is because you don't move your legs around that way that often. All right? You move your arms like this and do all this weird stuff all the time. All right? You don't do that with your legs. All right? But, I mean, how many times have you tweaked your elbow in jiu-jitsu? Right? Or your wrist, or your ankle, or your, I mean, it happens, whatever. And so if you're putting stuff on, and you're not a jerk, you're not trying to hurt somebody, and you get the position, all right? if you're going with somebody that you're much better than, all right? you get the position, and they're doing something stupid, you let it go. All right? You have to be cognizant of what's happening if you're rolling with like a white belt or someone who's not as technical as you. It's your fault if they get hurt. You know? Other questions? What do you think, like, most uh, of the people, like, teach wrong, but, uh, with, with, uh, but gets not addressed? So, uh, stuff you see is, like, uh, getting done wrong, but nobody says a thing. So, that, that's, that's tricky, right? Because there's all sorts of different instructors, and there's some that are way better than I am that could point out a zillion details that I'm doing correctly. Um, I think not focusing at all on fundamentals, right? If you're only learning like all the fancy shit, kind of like what I just showed one to you, right? <laughs> if that's all you're learning at your school, right? And you don't know how to stand up at base, you don't know how to block a punch, you can't defend yourself. If you're a brown belt, purple belt, whatever in jiu-jitsu, and you can't defend yourself, there's something seriously wrong with that. I'm not saying you have to do like Gracie combatives every day of your life. That's not what I'm saying. But if you don't ever train with strikes, ever, I don't know. That, that to me is a huge mistake. Because uh, so it's uh, also a thing that most of the people are missing, like self-defense. Self-defense, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. I mean, uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, some of the sports stuff is really cool, it looks awesome, love it, you know, but you got to be able to switch to defend yourself. I would, I mean, think about how you'd feel if you owned a school or you're an instructor, right, and you had, you know, some student of yours, brown belt, savage, winning all these tournaments, badass, goes out, someone just beats the crap out of them, steals all their money, all right, no weapons involved. You know, they go for like a bear and bolo, which is a good move, but you know, they're going for some <laughs> inverted shit and they just get their head caved in. You know? You feel like a douche. Right? Does it happen at your place? People well, <laughs> <laughs> getting into fights and uh... all the time, man. The, the wild streets of Connecticut. Savage. <laughs> Absolute savagery. Alright? So I teach my guys first, go inverted. Do an inverted butt scoot. Again, there's nothing wrong with going inverted. I think it's awesome. My old ass body can't do it anymore, but you know, it's cool. So I did quite some self defense stuff and boxing and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, one or two days uh, with another advanced student, with an advanced student, I went like MMA gloves on and we went wrestling with punches. Mm -hmm. And he just got on top of me when he punches and all my wrestling because all I did was good. <laughs> good. Yeah. It's good for you. So, my question was how to improve on this. So. Practice. Just do it more. Talk to your instructor. I mean, the more you get hit, the more you realize, you, unless you, you're weird, you, you don't like it, you're going to figure out some way to defend yourself from getting hit, right? If you only train with strikes like once every like five years, guess what? You're going to suck, right? And unless everything goes your way, like, yeah, if I get a, a beautiful takedown, I land in top position, I'm going to fuck somebody up. Straight up, right? But guess what? It's not always going to work that way. And if I get clipped or somebody takes me down and I'm on, you know, they, they get side control on me and they're not just hanging out going for Camaros or arm bars, they're trying to bash my face in the ground. And the last time I did anything to defend that was six years ago. It's probably going to be a bad day. And again, everybody trains for different reasons. So if it's not what you want to do, whatever, that's your thing. But it would be a shame to be awesome at jiu-jitsu and not be able to defend yourself. If you're applying that, do you use like street clothes or just... You can. So we've done stuff in the past where you like, especially back in the day. Like when I started, you know, like back in 2000, and that's not even anywhere near the first generation of jiu-jitsu in the U.S. But still, back in 2000, people, there was no like tournaments, the internet wasn't really a thing. You went there because you wanted to be able to defend yourself. That was mm -hmm. it. Or you thought it was cool. Right? You like saw it when you were a kid, like 18 or something like that. You saw Hoist beat a bunch of guys up in some weird thing and you couldn't understand it. Right? His pajama mastery, whatever. And then you found out there's a place nearby, you wanted to go there, and you went in and everybody just beat you up. It wasn't nice, it wasn't sweet, it, it wasn't comfortable, they beat the crap out of you, and if you could hang, then you just stuck around. That was it. And, um, you know, we'd show up occasionally, and we'd do stupid stuff with, like, uh, 
you know, wear all your street clothes. And we have one guy who uh, used to wear a tie for work and then never wore a tie again. Because he was like one of the higher level belts. And everybody choked him, including like the shitty white belts. Like everybody. And he never wore a tie. Like, legitimately, in his life, he's never worn a tie again to this day. And that was like 15 years ago. So. Anything else? Like <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Why do you do a stepping thing? I don't, I'm weird. I'm, <laughs> it's, uh, we I, honestly, it started off as uh, I was trying to draw attention to like what I was doing. If I was teaching technique, and I'd be like, oh, you take this hand, so like people, you know, you get students, which I love to death, but sometimes they're like, you know, doing this, so they don't know which hand was that again. I'm like, this fucking hand. All right, snap your fingers, and then it's stuck, and now, occasionally, and I hate it, when, I, when I'm rolling, it's the worst thing ever. It only happens occasionally, I'll fuck up, and it's usually on that damn move, too. Because like, it's the dude, it's, that rises my douche level up quite a bit. And that's not where I'm going, but, you know. It's but, coming. Yeah. Someone's got to come. Exactly, yeah, you know. Everybody else is really nice. I ain't got to uh, anything else? One, one really basic time. thing, though, um, I saw you holding on the leg for when you go for the omoplata, mm -hmm. right? Before you grab the belt for the other person not rolling over, mm -hmm. is it something you do regularly? I mean, when I go in and hold the leg, yeah, yeah, all the time. That's that's my preferred approach to go for the omoplata. So if I'm going for the omoplata, I want to go there. If that fails, then a lot of times I'll end up going for the failed above. And how how long do you stay holding on that leg? I'm super lazy, long time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so actually that helps yeah. you. It does for me. Because otherwise, the, like, the easiest way for me to screw up, like if I try and speed into the Mopata, right, and I'm going against somebody, and this is a large percentage, they're more athletic than me, they just skip right over me. Right? They just, they're, they're faster than me. I've had that happen way too many times. Right? The roll for me is pretty easy to stop because I can knock my legs and arm bar when they roll most of the time, unless they're good. Right? But um, if I just go straight into the Mopata and the person's good, the escape that I have the most trouble with is they'll skip over, you know, they'll just step yeah. over with both legs, yeah. and then I'm in a really bad position. And I don't want that to happen. So if I get control of that inside leg, it's much harder for them to get their legs over my head. Okay. It's not impossible, but much harder. All right? And then I can use that to either roll them over, or I can use that to flatten them out and come up and go for the finish. One more. <laughs> Anyone other than Jan loves questions, which I appreciate, but just in case anybody else has one. Going once. More stories. Going twice. <laughs> More stories. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, right. I wanted to ask you for a story or advice on fighting multiple opponents. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're really drunk and you're with your friends. Okay. That's not really fighting. All right? <laughs> but that's the only time that I would ever, like, you know, you can find out how it's going to go. We have a bunch of your friends trying to, like, you know, mildly fuck you up when you're drunk. That may or may not have happened in the past. <laughs> yeah, it's good friends, it's safer. You, and there's nothing realistic that you're truly gonna be able to do. Now, granted, you've seen, we've all seen videos of people like beating up a bunch of people. It's usually aggression, aggression, strength, power, right? With a bunch of people that don't really want to fight. Like, how many people have you seen about to get in a fight that talk all sorts of shit and nobody wants to fight? They puff their chest out, right? They talk all sorts of smack. They like do this sort of stuff, and then maybe one of them finally decides to fight, and there's a you know KO punch, sucker punch, whatever. <laughs> What ends up happening occasionally, the only time I've seen one person successfully beat up other people is when that one person actually <coughs> wants to fight and the five or three or four other people uh, don't. Right? They pretend like they do and then somebody turns on and the rest of them are like, oh shit. And even then, it still usually doesn't go well. And don't do like the uh, Steven Seagal or uh, <laughs> where they, go, they don't come at you one at a time. Right? <laughs> All right, no more questions. Let's take a photo and then you can all beat each other. Thank you, come.